Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, I want to say real quick, before I get into the news, I'm sure some people wondered what happened with Kevin Blanche. Um, when it rains, it pours, friends. Uh, not only did Kevin manage to uh, get the laptop cursed and uh, was unable to come on uh, due to technical problems, but I had a laptop cable die, and I wasn't on our own show on the Media Speak Saturday. So that is how that happened. We are rescheduling Kevin. I have a new cord, and all is running well. Um, higher mercury levels increase risk of diabetes. Now, this is going to be very important in terms of the next article as well. So some of the articles tie together again this week. Uh, this report, I do more than one week. A new research conducted by the Indiana University School of Public Health Bloomington has found that young adults consuming higher levels of mercury face a higher risk of type 2 diabetes by 65% later in life. Led by the university's epidemiologist Kahi, that's K-A-H-E, the study has identified the consumption of shellfish and fish as the main dietary source, dietary source of mercury. This finding imposes a complication on nutrition since fish and shellfish are also known to be an important source of lean protein and nutrients like omega poly 3, unsaturated fatty acids, and magnesium. Well, you can take calcium and magnesium in a supplement, and you can also take fish oil in a supplement. After Fukushima, if you're eating fish, you're a nutcase. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go, go to the last one. And thank you, by the way. It's one of the more popular videos. Uh, the research. Around 3,875 participants participated in the research after studying lifestyle controls and other dietary consumption of magnesium and omega-3 polyunsaturated acids. And the study was able to establish the connection between type 2 diabetes risk and mercury levels found in both men and women. That matters because I hope we all know by now that an altered, safe, yeah, form of mercury is in fact in many of our vaccines. Mike Adams, Natural News, May 13th, Australian Telegraph newspaper. Unvaccinated children should be raised as outcasts. This is disgusting. Um, it, and it, 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 brings, it brings to mind the most serious question, which came into my mind like a flash as soon as I got into this article, and then Mike Adams says it. And a new low for even the mainstream media, and that's a toughie, the Daily Telegraph and Sunday Telegraph newspapers in Australia are pushing a campaign of outright medical child abuse, of abuse that they call No Jab, No Play. The campaign demands that unvaccinated children be barred from all social contact with other children and condemned to a life of social outcast where parents are presumably supposed to raise them in cages in dark basements. The paper, it says, has launched its horrific anti-human rights campaign, No Jab, No Play, that demands children who are not vaccinated with state-mandated chemicals, which include mercury. Oh, we just found out how good mercury is for us, didn't we? Mercury, formaldehyde, aluminum, and other toxins, but denied interaction, they should be denied interaction with other children. Well, on the surface, you would say, okay, I mean, I don't want your unvaccinated kid getting my kid sick. Hey, bonehead, if your kid's been vaccinated, then your kid shouldn't be able to get it. Unless the vaccinations don't work. Shazam, Sparky! We might have found something here. To justify this medical child abuse against children, the Telegraph engages in an astonishing display of junk science logic that demonstrates the complete illiteracy of the paper's editors. It says most parents are rightfully fed up with those who put other people's children at risk. So let's examine this with actual scientific reasoning, shall we? Something in which the telegraph is entirely unfamiliar. This statement asserts that there are two groups of children, children who are vaccinated and therefore protected from infectious disease, and two children who are unvaccinated and therefore carriers of infectious disease as a threat to others. 
It further asserts that children from Group 2, the carriers, can somehow infect the Group 1 children. But hold on a second. Wasn't Group 1 vaccinated? And Mike Adams writes, Aren't they supposed to be immune to the disease precisely because they are already vaccinated? If vaccinations work, he writes, then a vaccinated child should be able to strut through even the most snot-nosed, coughing, sneezing, sick group of children and have no concern whatsoever for catching any disease, right, of which they've been vaccinated against. The vaccine offers up 100% protection. Yeah, you find out later on it really offers about one kind of protection. And the worst part of it is there are ways to make our, our um, <clears throat> vaccines absent from mercury. You do not have to put mercury into a vaccine. They use it as a preservative because it's cheap. Which is why I don't take them. Um, if I had children, um, I don't know. I, I want to know that the, the risk outweighs the disease. No flu shots. No pneumonia shots. No BS like that. And if you're a parent that doesn't want to give your kid any shots, then you should be allowed to have that happen without your kid growing up like a leper. All right, um, the Daily Caller. Climate scientists come to terms with the lack of global warming because we all know that man-made global warming is a lie. Been saying it forever, and I just get proved more and more correct with each passing news article. And, uh, I mean, that's good news. I mean, there's a lot of times, like Fukushima, where I'm right and I wish to God that I was wrong. This is excellent news. Despite the heated rhetoric from the Obama administration and environmental groups about the urgency of global warming, climate scientists have begun to come to terms with the lack of evidence of catastrophic global warming over the last decade. While some climate scientists continue to resist the obvious that the climate system is more complex than they assumed, others are starting to accept the multi-decadal climate projections provide very incomplete simulations as to how the real climate system works. Roger Pikey, P-I-E-L-K-E, Pikey Jr., Environmental Studies Professor at the Center for Science and Technology Policy Research at the University of Colorado, Boulder, he told the Daily Caller News. Uh, I'm going to go on with this. This is important for all the idiots that believe that man is warming the planet. Established media outlets have been reporting about the unexpected stabilizing global surface temperatures. Uh, for you top 40 fans, that does mean even now. Unexpected stabilizing global surface temperatures over the last decade, and even former NASA scientist and environmental activist James Hansen has recognized the decade-long wall. In other words, we're not warming up. We haven't warmed up at all in a decade. This has frustrated some environmentalists who, resent, who recently sent a letter to major news networks urging them to have more coverage on global warming and to stop portraying the issue as a two-sided debate by featuring global warming skeptics. That's the best thing to do. Shut the skeptics up when you know you're wrong. And that way, nobody will know that you're wrong except you, and you can continue to steal their money. Guys, look. Man is not warming the planet. It happens to be a matter of fact. It's been proven again and again and again that man is not warming the planet. All right, let me go a little bit more. A study by Norwegian researchers from earlier this year found that global warming is less severe than was predicted by the United Nations Climate Authority. In fact, studies have been lowering their warming forecast since the 07 UN estimate. They're doing everything they can to try to hide the fact that they are ripping us off with all this global warming stuff and all this shutting down of industry. Um, in the Washington Times op-ed, Cato Institute climate scholar Patrick Michaels provides a partial list of studies that have made estimates lower than the UN. Richard Lindzen gives a range of 0.6 to 1.0 Celsius. Andreas Schmitter, 1.4 to 2.8. And it goes on and on and on with all these people that are simply missing the boat here. The... The, 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 the glaring neon sign that's glowing for the world to see is that man is not warming the planet with his industry, with his car, or with anything else! Um, 
Another natural news article. Um, a European Commission to criminalize nearly all seeds and plants not registered with the government. I mention this because my best friend in the whole world is the bassist of Passing Time, my man. And while we were recording War On For Your Mind, we were talking about Alex Jones. And Dan said, and I love you, Dan. Dan said that he liked Alex Jones, but that some of the things that was said there, was he just knew was never going to happen. And I said, like, what? And he said, like, um, this fear that you won't be able to have your own seeds and that Monsanto is going to charge outrageous prices and shut farmers down. It's not going to happen. A new law proposed by the European Commission would make it illegal to grow, reproduce, or trade any vegetable seeds that have not been tested, approved, and accepted by a new EU bureaucracy named EU Plant Variety Agency. It's called the Plant Reproductive Material Law, and it attempts to put the government in charge of virtually all plants and seeds. Home gardeners who grow their own plants from non-regulated seeds would be considered criminals under this law. The draft text of the law, which has already been amended several times due to a huge backlash from gardeners, is viewable here, and if you go to the article, it's there. The law will immediately stop the professional development of vegetable varieties for home gardeners or granite growers or in small-scale market farmers, says Ben Gable, vegetable breeder and director of the Real Seed Catalog. Home gardeners have really different needs. For example, they grow by hand, not machine, and can't or don't want to use such powerful chemical sprays. Poisons! There's no way to register the varieties suitable for home use as they don't meet the strict criteria of the Plant Variety Agency, which is only concerned about approving the sort of seed used by industrial farmers. Virtually all plants, vegetable seeds, and gardeners to eventually be registered by the government. And then for those of you that don't believe that it's actually going to happen, I do love you, Dan. Supreme Court sides with Monsanto in major patent case. For those of you that don't know, maybe you listen to Kesha. That is the United States. Uh, this is from USA Today. The Supreme Court usually isn't friendly toward questionable patents, but it came down overwhelmingly on the side of agribusiness giant Monsanto Monday in a case that's bound to resonate throughout the biotechnology industry. The court ruled unanimously that an Indiana farmer violated Monsanto's patent on genetically modified soybeans when he, called, when he called some from a grain elevator and used them to replant his own crop in future years. They have to buy it every year now. So not only is it toxic when it grows, but you have to pay for it every year. You grew it, those are your seeds, not Monsanto's. Where the hell is our government at? Always asleep at the wheel. Always. If simple copying were a protected use, a patent would plummet in value after the first sale of the first item containing the invention, just as Elena Kagan ruled in a short 10-page opinion. The undiluted patent monopoly, it might be said, would extend not for 20 years, as the patent promises, but for only one transaction, and that would result in less incentive for innovation than Congress wanted. What they wanted was all of the money that Monsanto donates to the people that are in office in order to get this insanity. So what it means is not only is this food from Monsanto, and if you're new to the show, uh, if you look up Monsanto, you'll be horrified to find out what you're eating, and it is in your corn, and corn is in everything. Uh, many, many other food atrocities as well. Not only is this destroying the liver, the kidneys, the heart, the brain, now it's going to charge all of us even more by doing it and bankrupt farmers who don't or won't participate. Uh, in some instances, I'm sure jailing them. Welcome to Nazi America. Uh, last thing I want to get to, the Atlantic Wire. And whenever you tell somebody that you don't like Obama, they automatically think you're a Republican. Automatically. If you think Obama is doing an awful job, which he is, then you must have voted for Romney. Uh, no, I voted for Gary Johnson. Well, you always hear that if you are a conservative, that you somehow love Rush Limbaugh. I happen to think that Rush Limbaugh is one of the most intelligent people on the radio. Like, you, you can, people call and he's on it, boom, 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 boom. 
with, you know, the facts and the arguments and the paper and the sources, and if you watch his show, it's off the top of his head. He rarely even looks much of it up. But he's still a Republican. He's still wrong, just like Obama is wrong. He, he supports the most outlandish of things. So just because the man's extremely intelligent does not mean that I'm a fan of Rush Limbaugh in the traditional sense of the word. I respect his intelligence. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, necessarily agree with where that intelligence takes him. That's where his intelligence kind of breaks down. I mention that because, well, I'm going to have to do what I'm always accused of. And if Harvey Weinstein, Justin Timberlake... I mean, if they're against him, how could I not be for him? I mean, I just mentioned the most untalented people in music history. Thank you, Rush. I guess Obama said you did it. Must have been you. Thanks, Rush. President Obama told donors like Jessica Bill, the ultra-untalented who cannot sing Justin Timberlake, who was wearing hipster glasses, and Tommy Hilfiger, the most overrated clothing designer in all of world history, that Washington gridlock is pretty much Rush Limbaugh's fault on Monday evening at a fundraiser at Harvey Weinstein's house in New York's Greenwich Village. Well, thank you, Rush Limbaugh. Thank you so much for helping us. Obama? I didn't do it. Obama admitted that his theory that after the 2012 election that Republican fever would break and then decide to co-sign on his agenda was wrong. My thinking was when we beat them in 2012, and there is much, much proof that he cheated Romney. Look it up. Or that Romney was cheated. I don't know that it was Obama per se himself, but he certainly did nothing to stop it. Um, that might break the fever, and it's not quite broken yet, Obama said. He's basically calling anything against his agenda Republican fever. Obama said, according to the White House poll report, that is because of a certain corpulent radio host. I genuinely believe there are Republicans out there who would like to work with us, but they're fearful of their base and they're concerned about what Rush Limbaugh might say about them. I think they might just be concerned with the Constitution and the fact that you are the most abysmal thing to happen to our country, perhaps in the history of the whole country. Thank you, my friends, for listening to The Correct Views. Sam I B signing off. Make sure you go to the Media Speaks real quick and look at the look at the amount of work that's going up there. Our movie's done, and we're all back to, like, constantly posting. It's wildfire there, guys. Go and uh, break down the walls of the mainstream media because they're useless. They're lying to you, and you know where to get the truth at. I source everything I do, and if you like what I do, please donate to the show because all the money that you gives me, give me... All the money that you gives me, yo. All the money that I get goes to a better show. Thanks for listening. Good night. God bless.